Hello, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in, sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos, welcome. And welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light. I just wanted to give a little bit of an energy update and um, potentially go into flow. We'll see where we go with this. I was meaning to do an energy update last week and I just haven't had time or haven't made the time, we should say. That's, we'll get to the time capsule in just a little bit, maybe in the, another video. I wanted to address a few things energetically about just an overall recap to recognize that each of us is feeling something potentially different. So when we have these forecasters or we have people that are saying you should be feeling this or you will be experiencing that or there will be this, I'm really being called to invite everybody to take that with a grain of salt and paralleling that or also along those lines. We're starting to recognize and hear from other people that some of the teachings that maybe we we adhered to plan words that we had followed or read about that we believed in aren't necessarily correct. Now there's different layers of that, and I kind of went into two different subjects. So let's just start with the different feelings first. Whatever you're experiencing is what you are experiencing, and that's what you're supposed to be experiencing. You're not necessarily supposed to be experiencing other things. I give energetic updates sometimes and say, you might be feeling tingles, you might be feeling overwhelmed, you might be feeling you know, tired, you might be feeling energized. Yes, 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 yes. I'm only giving what I'm feeling and what I'm witnessing others or others are communicating with me in session or in conversation that I'm sharing so that those of you who might be feeling those things might go, oh, okay, maybe this isn't something that's something that's wrong with me. It might just be that I'm responding to some of the things that are happening in the collective soup that we are all part of. So just to be aware of that, there is no wrong or right way from my perspective that we need to be experiencing this. And it's different for everyone. For me personally, I tend to embody because I've chosen to, or this is the way I've chosen to have this experience. So I go through a lot of the physical sensations that are part of this journey, my journey. That doesn't mean you will. Also, I've been invited to get away from, and this kind of goes along the line with teachings that are wrong or right. There are some people that will say, well, if you're feeling these physical sensations, it's because you're not in alignment it's because you aren't doing something right. It's because you're in resistance. And I've said this before, and I still believe that in some ways, because if we're feeling discomfort, there may be something there that's showing us or showing up for us, for us to acknowledge, to integrate, to process that we might be in resistance to. From another perspective, it might just be that we're clearing out some old energy, that we're responding to our environment, that we might feel a little electricity coming from the plasma that's coming in from the sun or coming up from the earth. And that might be all we're experiencing. Sometimes it's trauma that we've held in our body that because of these stimuli helps to bring it up to the surface. All of that would be correct from one perspective because we're each going through this in a different way. So just really being compassionate with ourselves and not necessarily having to define what this looks like, what this feels like, what it should look like or feel like is better, what I should maybe say. And this also has to do with the teachings that we've been taught. For some of us, we've followed a particular belief system or teaching methodology our whole lives. And now we're being taught by another teacher that that's all wrong. Or 
we're being taught that the words we've been using are wrong or the definition of the words we've been using have been wrong. And I would say, sure, all of that could be true. But from a bigger or broader perspective, that's gonna change again eventually too, because the more we learn, the more we grow, the more we expand, the more we understand that things are different than they were. Therefore, the words that we have been taught are based on an old system. That doesn't mean throw the baby out with the bathwater. They can still be helpful. They can still be useful. And they can still guide us sometimes to give us a foundation for us to understand more about what we don't want or more about what we thought we knew or we can merge them with some of the new. So going to extremes is something that we're really being called from my perspective to let go of. And that means jumping into another program. This is the program now. All of that other stuff doesn't matter anymore. This is the new way. Because all of us who share this information, no matter who we are, we all are doing it through our own filters, our own belief system, our own perspective. So what I have to share, even though I listened to um, Amanda Lawrence the other day, I really enjoyed her video. And she was using the same words I had been using in regards to very similar things. And I thought it was just so funny and so synchronistic. And this happens a lot in the spiritual community. We each have a different way of defining our experience. So the words she was using were in relationship to maybe something slightly different at a slightly different angle than the words that I had been receiving expressing whatever you might want to call it but it still meant the same thing so not um the word that kept coming up what was it last month was pigeonhole don't pigeonhole ourselves into just a particular belief system the more we can just let go of the need to follow a rigid structure teaching style methodology from one perspective is helpful because this reality is much more fluid than the old rigid system and that doesn't mean though not to follow a strict diet maybe if we're in the process of doing a cleanse do you see where i'm going with that there's a time and a place and this particular time and place we're all learning how to navigate and uh express in a very, in a myriad of ways that reflects a lot of different versions of our realities. So really recognizing what fits for us and what doesn't is important to feel into what we resonate with and recognize that that could change and shift and not judge someone else because it doesn't fit in their profile. It doesn't necessarily fit with what their teaching style is or what their learning style is or whatever it might be. Does that make sense? I kind of went a little bit broad on that, but that's kind of the message that I've been receiving. Open our heart. Less logic and more heart. The heart will then guide us to the logic that we come into a deeper knowing about it's a combination of the knowing it isn't one or the other it isn't this is the only way um so as these teachings come out and people start to debunk certain things i would be very cautious about how much we dive into even the debunking because Yes, certain things are being debunked and great. Getting back to the basics of letting go of the need to follow a particular leader of a particular teaching method or methodology and finding a fluidity of following our own guidance system, 
our own internal system. Even though I might listen to some people who come into my field and resonate with them, it doesn't mean that that's the only person or only teaching that I am going to then from this point forward, dedicate myself to. I'm always called back to coming back into alignment with dedicating myself to my own team. Because in that, I'm able to be of greater service, if we want to call it that. Um, I can just hear somebody out there going, well, service is an old paradigm. And that means this. Meh. Does it? I don't know. I feel that the meaning of a lot of things has shifted from one generation to another generation. I remember when um, rainbow only meant the light coming through the water and the prism, the colors that it makes and the refracting and all of this. Now it represents a lot of things. So recognizing that is important even in the spiritual community. We all have different definitions about what things are. And from my perspective and just sharing, there is no definitive definition in some cases that will continue to morph and change and shift as we expand to hold more knowingness about what that meant at one time. Um, we're processing this knowledge like a computer. And so if the computer's hard drive is built, is not, um, let's say, AI, it's not growing, it has a limitation. And maybe we're adding on components, but it's always going to reach a certain maximum capacity for understanding based on the vibration and again, I'm hearing that again, like somebody's gonna say, well, vibration, you're misquoting it, or that's, be, that's a misrepresentation. I'm using words that hold a frequency because of the energy of how I'm sharing the information, not necessarily exactly the definition of that word. Now, I know that sounds a little funny because, well, then how do we base our communication on words that aren't necessarily definitive or held within a certain capacity and i'm sure an english professor would read what i've written and go oh this is a mess because in multi-dimensionality it doesn't work that way the words aren't necessarily the the juice they do hold power they hold meaning one means one but it can also mean a lot of things love means love but it's the tone, the sound, the frequency, the energy, the vibration. So clearly my area of expertise does not fall in the definition of all of these words. I still use etymology and I still use a dictionary because that's the foundation. So that is real and that is definitive, but it also branches out from there. So there's a certain amount of fluidity in how we communicate in the higher dimensions from another perspective. So it's just being open, allowing ourselves to feel into the spaciousness of what's unfolding and being in awe and of what we're learning and not locking us into a new paradigm because it's not the old paradigm um, unknowingly, right? Unwittingly is what I'm hearing. And I'm, that's a play in words like it's kind of funny how we're like ah oh, that's old news we're here now, and this is different, this is this is how it works that other stuff was wrong, maybe for this now moment, but back then it may have been exactly what we needed in order to get us to this now moment is another message that's been coming through. Okay, so some of the physical things that you might be experiencing after I said earlier doesn't mean you're going to experience it. I've had a lot of people this week who've had vertigo. Um, and uh, I had a client that said, I have this kind of vertigo, not the kind that's contagious. I guess there's, I've, I've mentioned this before, there's a, a virus sometimes that vertigo is thought to be a virus. 
and sometimes it's the crystals in the ears that move around. Again, I'm not going to define it. I'm just going to say this feeling of dizziness, this feeling of, whoa, I'm on a boat and the boat is rocking. That can sometimes be, you know, it's no coincidence necessarily that a lot of people have had it. It's not necessarily a coincidence that we've also had a lot of earthquakes, that we've also had a lot of solar activity, that there's also been a lot of collective fear coming up, a lot of feeling of uh, time lapses. I did a video on time lapses uh, recently. So I think from one perspective, it's all, you know, it's all connected. So just being aware of it so that we are maybe um, recognizing that. And there are, uh, you can go to the doctor and I believe there's a machine they can put you on to get your crystals back in your ears or back in your ears, not like they fell out, but they fell out of alignment. And um, also it can have to do with ear infections. It can have to do with sinuses. It can have to do with, you know, ears, nose, throat, that whole, everything's connected. Um, recognizing am I drinking enough water it can do with dehydration it has to do with dehydration so all of these things impact us and we tend to be more dehydrated when we are going through a lot of this planetary a solar activity from another perspective we might find out in 10 years that that was just a belief system but right now I feel it and so that's just how I how I kind of tune into my environment and my internal environment as well. Uh, trouble sleeping has been a big common theme. This has been going on for years though, for some people. So it's nothing new to some of us. To some of us, it's like, what is going on? Enhanced dream time, shared dreams, um, collective shared dreams, experiences. So that I believe has to do also in part with serotonin levels and melatonin levels. And if our body is expanding and we are activating certain things within our DNA, if we are going up that ladder, so to speak, did I say that earlier? I'm gonna say it again. So, cause I can't remember because I, I pre-recorded something earlier and deleted it. Um, the guides were showing me that we're we're moving up. So essentially, you're not going from college back to high school unless you want to. Let me do it better. Once you turn 16, you don't go back to 14 years old. You keep go getting older in this human form. So the guides are kind of showing me that's what this is. So when I get asked, well, when are we going to, when is this going to level off? It does level off like a staircase. So you go up you level off, you go up, you level off. These stairs just seem to be going a lot. It's like an escalator. So some of us are walking up the escalator and some of us are slowly up the escalator and some of us are just letting it take us up. So we're each choosing, whether we recognize it or not, how we're moving up this escalator of ascension. And this escalator of ascension is escalating. So from one perspective, it's becoming faster and easier to move and expand and for others again the resistance factor comes in they want to go down the escalator go back to where they started but i keep having this picture of people going down and never getting back the, the elevator is still going up so we're all essentially going up from uh and i know that there's some teachings that say no not everybody is some people are going over to that other earth and that's not how i see it however that doesn't mean that that isn't what's happening i just see things a little differently i see things as being overlays and overlays and sub and bubbles within bubbles within bubbles so everything's connected there is no separation um so anyways that's another another theme and that doesn't matter to me for me, from my perspective, I don't really feel that the field is going to just tear apart and then they'll be over here and I'll be over here. 
meaning my family and friends and loved ones. Cause I know that's a concern for a lot of people. I would invite anyone who's in fear about that to just, again, go into your heart and feel, what does that feel like? Does that feel like something that love would do? Does that feel like something, um, you know, these are all things to kind of ask ourselves. And if you feel that that's what's going to happen, that might actually be something that unfolds in your bubble of reality, which is difficult to go into. I highly recommend Bashar's videos, especially some of the latest ones he's done. I haven't watched them all, but I have watched enough of his videos to go, yes, that is very similar to how I see reality working. Not exactly, but that's, again, my perspective, my filter versus his perspective and his filter or Daryl Ankh's Ankh. Okay, there's more. Um, and I know I've had people say to me, Carrie, what's your perspective? Well, I have many. And that's part of what I'm offering. I'm here to offer different perspectives because that's just how it works for me. That's that works for me. That gives me a view into other people and what they potentially see. And I get it. I understand oftentimes what it is they're seeing and why they're seeing it. And that doesn't mean I share that viewpoint. That doesn't mean I share that perspective. So I, um, and they change. I change based on what I learn and based on my own personal experience. So I'm doing the best I can to just share certain views on reality. I view reality as shifting from moment to moment and also a little bit it is what it is what we're choosing to create. If enough of us and a collective is choosing that experience. There is a potential that that's the experience they will have. That doesn't mean that's the experience I'm going to have. And that's essentially what I'm saying, if that makes sense. And if it doesn't, that's OK, too. Um, we're being called to reorganize and constantly ask ourselves, how am I feeling in this moment? Is the reality that I'm seeing reflecting my own truth? Is what's playing out in my life? Because sometimes there's, I, I was kind of shown that there's a an echo and it catches up to us. So a lot of the things that we're seeing playing out are because of previous activities we've participated in, previous choices that we've made, and they're catching up to us you know, so to speak. But I've also been shown that many of us are out creating those. So those previous ripples can sometimes just get absorbed into the wave and not necessarily impact us as we have in previous energies and frequencies or as strongly we're staying in that direction and being rigid and not in our hearts, of course. Okay. So that is a little bit of the energetic update. I know um, So managing stress is very important if we're going to go back to just some basic things. Breathing, heart math, grounding, drinking plenty of water. Um, I tend to forget to drink water throughout the day. I drink a huge thing of water at night. I know I'm, I'm up all night, but also that can help me sometimes lucid dream. Um, writing, journaling, being compassionate to our friends and family who are potentially going through a lot of physical ailments right now. Again, equalizing scuba divers everybody one person might be equalizing and they might um have allergies and so it's difficult for them to get to that level or layer because they have to go through some physical cleansing first before they can go there or 
I'm going to use, we were talking, I was joking with someone earlier, we were talking about scuba diving, and they had said they scuba dove when they were hung over once. Ooh, not good. So what happens? Gross. Um, but that's a very good analogy for what's going on. Some of us have to purge and detoxify before we can go deeper, because there's lots of stuff. It could be energy that we haven't let go of it could be belief systems about ourselves about our body about who we think we are it could be ego um whatever it might be and it could also be actual physical things like alcohol or sugar you know meat whatever it might be it may not be and i mean those things in excess right so I'm not saying you have to do get rid of all of those things. That's your choice. I know for me, that's what I, cho- I choose to get rid of, specifically if I'm doing a detoxification and also in modification. Again, not going to the extreme. So this was another important message about balance. If we're going to detoxify because we're like, well, I want to see what's on the bottom of the ocean and, and everybody else is down there and I can't equalize for example, or let's flip that and say, I can't, I want to get up here and I'm not able to, if we just hardcore it, our body is going to go through a harder time equalizing because we have to acclimate, we have to adjust. And so every person is different. Um, Some people have never done any work at all. They've got trauma in their body from childhood whatever it might be, and it's coming up right now. And they're like, I need to see a therapist. I need to go get energy work. I need a Reiki healer. I need a massage, whatever it might be. Other people are like, I've never done a liver cleanse. Huh, this might be the time. But doing it appropriately and not going to that extreme is important because sometimes we wanna get there. And what I've found over the years because I go, I oscillate. I'm going to do a cleanse because I was kind of naughty over the holidays. I feel it. And so what happens is I recognize it is about the journey because as I do these cleanses, I remember, oh yeah, this is what it was like. Oh, I forgot about this. Oh, I didn't process that. And here it is again. I tried to avoid that last time I went through this. Well, okay. sometimes, not just about getting through the cleanse, feeling what our body is telling us as we go through this cleanse, feeling the incremental changes and celebrating how that feels from one day to the next, even though the beginning might be a little punchy, you know, it might be a little crunchy. It might be a little bit like, oh man, I'm exhausted. Uh, you could get a rash sometimes when you do cleanses. It could be, it disturbs your sleep. So Again, I really encourage everybody to do your due diligence and make sure that you're supporting yourself as much as you can. Um, If you're doing a parasite cleanse, you might have to take certain vitamins at night to help uh, decrease some of the symptoms. And again, I've heard that doing a parasite cleanse around a full moon is helpful. I've never done one around the full moon, but that's what I've been told and I'm willing to give it a shot. Why not? Um you know, honoring if you are, maybe your friend is doing this at night and you need to do it in the morning, different schedules, different people have different sleeping patterns. So again, it's an individual journey. One person may not have any parasites, but they might have a liver problem. Another person might just be full of heavy metals, but really not have any parasites. So sometimes doing our due diligence and the blood work and things like that is important too. And this is where doesn't hurt to go to a doctor and kind of see where you land. Um, Even if you're going to, or a doctor could be a a medical practitioner, which is also a naturopath, or you could just go to your nutritionist if you feel like you've already kind of covered that basis to get a separate set of blood work done to see what your allergies are and things like that. Um, And I could go on and on. So those are the biggest updates I've had. And I haven't even gone into in a while, galactic stuff and uh, 
other things, other realms, because it's all relevant right now, or excuse me, it's all relative based on where each one of us is at. I know when I've got regular old life things going on, I tend to retract a little bit from going into the stars and being galactic and and really kind of tuning into, um, well, let's say whatever's going on on the internet. I've had a lot of people come to me who are new. And I just had a dear friend kind of joke the other day that, um, and I've just got to use this because I think it's so uh, relevant right now. And they said, did you know that there's this group and they're the Illuminati and they're doing this and they're doing that. And we were, I, we were laughing about it because that is great to learn about these things. And I've been there, done that, gone down the rabbit hole as I've talked about before. But is that going to improve my health? Is that going to make me feel better? Knowledge is power. However, knowledge about things that are not relevant to our own growth and understanding, if that's your area of expertise and that's your, you know, where you're going with it, wonderful. But there's more than just that. And so that leads me back to balance, understanding this and recognizing that that is interesting. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on who you are. Again, is that story real? Is it not real? I'm pushing all that off to the side right now because as my wave expands, that gets absorbed, that gets digested, integrated, and dissolved rather than me getting pulled into that wave and not necessarily being in my heart, paying attention to what my body needs, doing what I need to do to be that light that shines the light on things like that, not literally, but energetically. And I'm not knocking, by the way, people who do that, who are out there getting out the truth. It's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is as we learn about these things, recognizing that those things are echoes from the past. Some may have some residual residue and those stories are also shifting because the people that were part of those stories are shifting, growing and expanding. Not all of them in their own way, and I'm not labeling one group. Let me really define this. <laughs> what did I say earlier? Don't define. Let me re reword that. What I'm trying to say is it isn't relevant to my personal growth at this stage of my growth. So whatever stage a person is at is up to them. I recognize that that is important to have knowledge about things. But I also recognize that knowledge coming from an outside source, no matter what the story is about, is coming from an outside source, even though we're all one and it's really coming from me because we're all inside and we as we. This particular message is what happens when you go multidimensional. It's like, whoa, we're all one. So really, that's me. Those that I'm that that's me. That's a reflection of shadows of me. What? Okay, back on track. So as I expand my energy field, all of that gets encapsulated within a bubble of energy, a wave, electricity, plasma, it gets dissolved. As a collective, we're dissolving these old stories, these hierarchical programs, for example, whatever they might be. And when we learn about them, it does turn on some things for us to go, oh, aha, light bulbs go off. We have these understandings. We process, we integrate. But at some stage, that is still coming from a linear perspective, something outside of us. It's knowledge about something that's still based on a story, that's still based on a perspective, that is still coming through a filtration system that was at one time part of an old paradigm. So here we are now. From my perspective now, that is not something that serves me any longer for the greater good of my own expansion, because I already know about it. I understand it. It is was what it was. No longer is what it was. I'm using that one particular word. There's so many. Let's talk about science. 
let's talk about politics, social, whatever we want to plug into that paradigm. So knowing about it is, is one thing, but recognizing that that knowledge is left brain analytical. The knowingness that we're being called to tune into is our heart, our body, our connection to all things, our deep resonance with the earth, our connection to the source energy, the spirit that moves through all things, our compassion for humanity, what it is that we feel blissful doing, talking about, growing, inventions that help the greater good of all of us or add to the greater good of all of us that help mankind, that help us mankind in kind, all of our kind, this together and not separation of these particular paradigms and stories that we have been compartmentalized into believing listening to focusing on etc etc repeat repeat loop loop time and time again so just keeping these things in mind and in heart and so we can branch out and thread into all of these things and be aware of them and and recognize them acknowledge that doesn't mean that that needs to be our focus or that that focus is what we should be focusing on so this is going to continue to come up because this is just one part of many different compartmentalizations and remember that words plant come part parting up mentalization, the mental reality. And so letting go of that to move up into the next level where that can't quite follow us because we're absorbing it with this wave of compassion. I hope that made sense because as I'm sharing these words, there's so much coming in. I'm speaking um, it's the energy behind what I'm sharing uh, that we're being called to tune into. Um, okay, I'm going to end on that note. In love and light, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, sharing this now moment. Namaste.